Okay, let's talk about your... 13 to 19. Yeah. When I was 13 years old, I was forced to work outside like a man. There is no question, either you are a woman or a man. When the time comes to get up, you have to get up and go up on the field. And this is the way we had. There is no farm on one spot. There's farms like this, you know. This is in a village, a great big house. We all sleep in there. In the morning, we go on one side, and there's about 15 or 20 acres of land in that. Mm -hmm. We are busy for two days with four wagons and all the hired people and our own people. We usually have quite a few older people, and I was just in, in between them. Whatever the older people have to work, I have the same thing, you know. If I don't catch to keep on going, they come back and help me to get up. Yeah. That's how I'm going out, out there with them. But nevertheless, you are filling up the size of the men. Mm -hmm. That's all you fill up. Mm -hmm. When you come back to the road, and you're going back and forth, back and forth, four times before noon. How long did you work? Like, like uh, did you work when you were all the way through until before you came to America? Yeah, you kept yeah. working every yeah. year in the field? Yeah, every day, not every day field. There's a winter, uh -huh. and in the winter time you don't work outside. Yes, I'm saying, did you work every year though? Oh, yeah. All the way until you were 18, oh, and oh, then you came oh, to America? Always, always. Okay. Every day you work the same thing. The, the older you are, the more you physically, you know, you, you do that. What exactly did you do in the field? On a field, in the springtime early, we plow. You know, just plowing, plowing, always horses and a wagon that pull the two, two, the, what do you call it, the turnout, the land. Mm. Plow. Till? You know. A tiller? You know, plow, the one that you turn the land over. A tiller? Well, that's regular. Two two lines of pieces steel. Yeah, tills the land, right? Yeah, yeah. Tills and turns it. Uh -huh. You go ahead, just have to, and the horses know which way they go. They always go in left foot on a higher and a right foot on a little lower. That's the field, you know. Uh -huh. You don't have to watch them. They're never going to go this way or this way. They always go one way on the uh -huh. line, you know. They all know. At the end of the line, you have to be there to turn the horses around. Uh -huh. You know, this is the way you started. This is your land. Big on this side and big on this side, and as long as, as 3,000 feet one way. And you started this way, then when you come down to the, they stand, stopped, you know. And you said, left, now level, that means level. They go left, 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 they turn it around themselves. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go and turn it around. Then the horse, the hoop pulls it, you know. He, he's looking for the for the weed, you know. One foot on the weed, one foot on the... And he picked out. He picks it out and goes around. Way out there to the 13, 14 hundreds of miles, you know. Then he starts. You can turn about four times before the... In a half a day. Mm. Four, the, four times, you know. If you, mm -hmm. if you turn seven or eight times, that's plenty. You can't turn more than, you have to turn about three afternoon and four before noon. You turn around and you plow that. You know, always going land here. No matter which way you go, land going this way. All the way down. When you get through, then you start, that's the plow. Then you have the two horses and a, what do you call that? 
made out of the wood, you know, a little tiny that trims that, you know. The, you know how the ground, when you turn it upside down, mm -hmm. it's a bunk, bunk, you know. Well, you just trash that, like, you know, with the horses and a great big, from here to the end, you know, where the two horses fit, and they pulling that, you know, pull. And when they pull that, I'll show you how that looks. Give me that pencil, I can show you how that looks. Yeah, give me the pencil. This is the way that little thing looks, you know. Like this, you know. Mm -hmm. All all the way down there. And it's so thick, you know. About this thick. Uh huh. Like a like a like a giant rake? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. it, and he the horses are tied up one here and one here. Uh -huh. They are hooked up in here and pull this. Mm -hmm. You just go after this right here, you stay. Mm -hmm. And when you say left, they stop or or do something. Whatever you say, they have to stop, you know. If it to stop the horses, no, just like a man. You don't have to yell at them. Mm -hmm. Just, oh, you know, just like that. Mm -hmm. Then they stop. Then you just said, Turn left, Liska, whatever her name is. She turns left and she goes round, round on the other side. And that's the that's the grinding, you know, that's the dirt filler. You know, when the when the that's a tractor, like when you turn the when you turn the land. The lands are like this, you know, humps. In any place. Uh -huh. The hole you can way up to here, you know. So this little thing goes around and fill them up. Either. Okay, that's the second turn. The third day, me or brother, whoever it is, you know, six horses and a machine. And the machine is a big one, you know. And you fill up the machine, only not so low. The machine is about this high and long, you know. You fill up this end with a two bags of corn. You have enough of that corn to plant, you know. Da -da 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 -da. Six plants, you know. We go and pull the six horses, pull the heavy stuff. They pull them out at, at one end and turning around on the other end. They plant the corn, you know. They plant just, they just plant the corn like this. When they turn, they're separate, about this much. Mm -hmm. One wheel turn, here, this is empty. Corn, 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 like this, you know, separate them. Then when the corn is about two or three weeks old, you know, he grows about this much in two weeks. You just have to go with a shovel. This, this count more than two. You know, there's about sometimes three, three, all come out. You just cut them out, leave two, 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 with your hands, mm -hmm. fast as you can make it. You know, you you never saw so fast hands. You know, you just go like this. You know, as soon as you see the corn. Just like this, you know. In other words, you're thinning the corn out. Yeah, thinning the corn. Uh -huh. Because you cannot make that with a machine thinner, neither with your hand. When you go with the hand, you throw it away. You never can tell how many, three or four or ten. Mm -hmm. Well, you go ahead and thin them around. Then when you have corn, 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 all the way down and back and forth, back mm -hmm. and forth, till you thin them all around. On the way going, you do two lines, you know, two lines. Right. You stay in the middle. In a way back, you do two lines, uh -huh. and then every one of us had the same line till we thin the corn. Then we let it sit there for about another one, probably probably a month, three weeks is average, mm -hmm. until the corn is about two weeks is this way. Uh -huh. After two weeks, for six weeks, about this big. In six weeks, this big. You have to do the same thing. 
turn around and whip one, one, one instead of two, you know. Mm -hmm. If the one is just a little shivering, you leave two. You know, that's the, uh -huh. that you are the judge of the corn, what's going to go. And that takes you a month to thin it and to make it go. And then after that, in between, you always find different works. You never through. Like what? Like what kind of work? In between the corn, mm -hmm. you have a rye, you know, not the wheat, not the corn, but the rye. And the rye is the one that grows about this high from the ground this high. Mm -hmm. You can bury yourself, you know, easy. We have to do that fast before he grows up faster to go ahead and plow that, you know, really fast. Uh -huh. And sometime after a while, when I was about 14, we bought the machine. Uh -huh. But before you buy the machine, you have to work like a horse. So what are you doing to the rye now? We, you... we pack them up, you know, in a bundles mm -hmm. and bring them home while they are wet, while they are fresh, you know. Uh -huh. Right today we have to, one is cutting, another one is packing it, taking it home. Another bundle is home, making the, oh, about seven, eight of those straws, you know. Mm -hmm. You just have to tie them here, you know, at the, at the end, you know, while they're fresh. You tie up the seeds and the whole thing, you know, right in the corner. Then you have to turn it this way, you know, the two of them. One, two, three, like this, and then you pedal them up right in a, on a bundle. Mm -hmm. You have to make them for uh, tie up the wheat. Mm -hmm. With this rye, we tie the wheat. You know, there is no uh, ties because there was a uh, when I was thirteen, there was a there was a war, uh -huh. and the whole you know, uh, for which you tie, that you tie, you know. Yeah. It was coming from Germany, and Germany shut the door. No, no strings, no, no nothing, you know, to import. We had to do the old-fashioned way with the rye. So anyway, that rice keep moisture. Always within a two weeks time, the wheat is ready to go. Uh-huh. One, one month corn is about this big, uh -huh. and the wheat is ready to go. <laughs> Somebody came in across and planted the corn just about two weeks earlier. He's got corn to eat while we are just beginning to, to raise ours. Anyway, that was the point. Then we have to tie up those weeds. We have the machine, but no ties, uh -huh. because the ties are all coming from Germany, and it's the door is locked, you know, you can't buy nothing. And what's this machine do exactly? Pardon me? What does the machine do exactly? Machine has to cut that wheat. Uh-huh. And we lost the So what do, you, what do you do then? What well, do we have to go outside and cut it up, you know, the machine is cutting up, you know, and throw it. Cut it up and throw it, you know. You can't tie it. No, there is no ties, you know. All so right. we have to just go and pick up that wheat right away as soon as she throws it. She cuts and cuts them and packs them in a, in a bundle, then she throw them out. When she throw them out, the whole wheat is like this, you know. Mm -hmm. Then you go ahead and pick it up in time. That's the hardest job we had during the war time. But with, with, without war, we have all that string, you know. But I don't understand. What, what did you tie it with if you didn't have any string? But there is nothing else to tie, just the rye. You have to prepare the rye. So what do you, I don't understand. Like, you tie it yeah, to make and, it easier, and, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And bring it back. You know, that's home already. Uh -huh. Then you have to put the tie with the wheat. You have to take the ties with you on the field in so, the wheat. So what did you do? What did, what did you do when you didn't have any ties? You just when, we, when you didn't have any ties, what did you do? Well, you can't do nothing. You have to have, to have the ties somehow. So what did you do during the war? You what? had to, you didn't you didn't take any wheat then? No, the, when this when the war started on the thirteenth, uh -huh. 
Uh, we know right before the war started, yeah. it's going to be war. Plant up right away for the wheat. Uh -huh. The wheat was just a little one, you know. Right. You have to plant that so they grow. When the wheat is about this high, the, the ties has to be this high. So we have to have that, you know. What's tie? Tie, to tie up the wheat. What's it made out of? Part of that rye. Rye bread. You know what the rye? Okay. It's made up. The tie that you tie the rye with is made of rye. Yeah, bare rye. The rye is just like a wheat. Then how come you didn't have any ties? Well, you have to have a tie, otherwise you well, eat. Well, you, whenever you grew wheat, whenever you grow wheat yeah. or rye, you have ties with the wheat and rye. Yeah. So you couldn't run out, could you? About what? Ties. But the ties made... How could you run out? If it's made from the wheat. Oh, you can you can make that out of the wheat too, you know. The ties. Oh, but usually it wasn't made out of wheat, right? Oh, yeah. You have to have either the wheat, and the wheat is expensive, that's for the bread. <laughs> you don't understand. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't understand it. Okay, you took the wheat and you tied it up with something. Yeah. What did you tie it with normally? Oh, with the tie, with the... Normally, what did you tie it with? With the, from Germany, the ties, you know, the what? string. String. Yeah. But since there was a war on, you used the wheat itself to tie yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. There, now you got it. All right. I, I'll talk the both way, with a war or without a war. Okay. This is during the war for two years it lasted. Mm -hmm. And we all know that. But there is a lot of wheat on the field, you know, lost. The poor people didn't have nothing to tie. They just have to pull it, you know, with the, with the roots uh -huh. and tie it up and tie up their wheat so they can bring it home. Uh -huh. When they bring it home, you know, you have to bring those bundles home because the wheat is in the a, in a, in a top of the wheat, you know. You know how the wheat grows? Yeah. Well, that's it. The wheat is about this big, you know, all full of wheat. Mm -hmm. Well, if you tie the whole thing with the wheat, you waste it, you know. You know, you you melted this. You know, when you make a tie, you melt this. You, the wheat is all down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean now. Yeah. All right, this is the wheat growing up. When you're going to pull it out and make a tie out of them, well, you're going to knock the wheat down. All right. Well, to save that, because we saved... In the first year, over hundred of uh, hundred bags, you know, of the hundred pounds, you know, bags of wheat to tie up. Mm -hmm. That's how much we saved. Mm -hmm. We have over hundred and twenty acres of land of wheat alone. Uh -huh. Well, how can you tie it? You have to tie it somehow. We were using the old one, you know. We, you know, make two out of one. Anyway, that was the first thing. And after we, we finished it somehow. It's not a job the way we wanted, but it's the best you can do it, you know. Uh -huh. And that's the reason I have to say, you know, this is with the rye, and this is with the old uh, strings from last year, you know, because we used to melt that and in a fire, you know. We didn't know the difference. When we cut that, you know, wheat to throw it in a threshing machine, the, the tie goes with it too, mm -hmm. and it thrashes it out to the nuts. After a while, we find out that we can't buy it, you know. Oh, the saving, the saving, the saving, you know. And then when they picked up the handful, throw it on the side, you know. Then out of that bundle, we picked out as much as we can. But you never can pick out as much as you have the wheat. We lost in our first year, over 50 acres of wheat. This is in 1914 or 1913? 1913. Okay. Yeah, because we were caught in a war, we didn't know that. Mm -hmm. and for the 14, we sent it, we planted right off the bat, you know. Okay. The war lasted three years. Well, for one, two, three years, we know how to do it. Mm -hmm. The Germany didn't prepare for us, and she prepared for the whole world. And she was in a war, she didn't care, you know, who you are, no matter. We prepared for four years. That was the hardest job of all. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, in between the wheat 
the corn is already big. You have to prepare to cut it, you know, mm-hmm. and not to cut it. You have to go and, you know, on a line, the corn is about this big already. You just go and run and you have to throw it out, you know, about as far as you can go this way. Then if you are further up, you just throw this way. Further up, you throw, throw it. And always in the same bundle. Then there is a kids like me or younger. We go out and picked out, you know, in a whole, for the bundle is from here to that tree or more, you know. Uh-huh. Picked out and threw it out, you know, in a bushel. Then the then we have to cut the corn, you know, four layers from one end to the other end, you know, so the wagons and the horses could go through. And we all pick up the corn in a bushel and in a car, in a car, in a wagon, you know. Uh-huh. And the wagon is just a wagon. <laughs> it couldn't hold any more than as much as you can. One wagon full as long as he maybe holds about 100 bushels. That's the biggest, Mm -hmm. you know. But then if you have the 100 bushels, you can't pull them, you know. You have to make 50 or 60 bushels. Then the two horses pull it up, you know. That's the way we work. The corn is nice, the wheat is finished, and the corn begin, you know. And then by the time, oh, but we have about 85 to 90 acres of corn. Mm-hmm. But by the time you peeled up the whole thing, you know, by your hands, that takes a long time, you know. You have to peel up on one side, there's three or four on one, throw it away. Peel up three, four on this side, on next, on this side, on next, on this side. You know, you have to take that. You are so busy that if you don't know how to do that, you're far behind. What happened when you were finished with with, a with gathering the corn? The corn. Yeah. yeah. Then we have to go, in the daytime, we pick up the corn. And the evening, about 7 o'clock after supper, we all sleep on the field like horses, you know. Then we have to, two and two, you, you take two and I take two. I take one and pick up the bundle, you know, yourself, the corn, about this much. Then you throw it up on the, on the floor, you know, and further. And just like this, you know, you, do, you don't have no idea. You are, you know, isolated with uh-huh. all the work. Then when you go from here to the end of the line, <laughs> just like this, you know, all are tired up. And that's the only way we do it. In evening, the same corn that we picked up at daytime, it has to be cut to midnight. <laughs> to midnight. After midnight, ah, we are all tired. Ah, let's go to sleep. Corn is about this big high. And in that, the corn is growing like the dickens, you know. That's a field for that purpose. The wheat grows from this way to this size in a month, it's done. And the corn size from this side to this side in a month. It grows like if you pull them out, you know. Uh-huh. The corn is total in a land, two and a half months, total. But what do you think from the seed way up, <laughs> six foot high? But you got used to it, that's natural. But when you pick that up, you know, or you go home, or like, when you're finished, we have 10 acres there, 15 acres there, 30 acres down there, 50 acres down this way, all the way around the village. The village is in the middle, and the field around us, you know, from here to the other, sec- to the second village. It could be, I don't lie, but about five to ten acres mm-hmm. one way, five acres this way, five acres this way, five acres or ten acres this way. You know which is your portion. You don't go on somebody else's portion and pick it up. He'll kill you. <laughs> That's his land, you know. And how do you know? 
You got your land inside in a corner and about this much sticks up, you know. Yeah, one piece of land like this, you know. Uh -huh. And in that land, your name and a number, that's all. Your name and a number, that's a big stone, five foot deep. You cannot get it out, you know. So you know your land, that's the way we know it. And you cannot touch the neighbors. If you do, you better watch your feet. <laughs> what happened in the fall when you're all through with the growing? Oh, yeah. What did you do then? Well, what were you after, after the whole thing, corn is inside, you know, when we bring the corn, we bring the corn, we bring the, uh, the hay, you know, that we bring that all down in the house. It's all already November, mm -hmm. you know, from early spring to November. Then we start, who is home? The women, three women that's either pregnant or something is going on, they feed the horses, you know, that's home. Not horses, I mean pigs, you know. Mm -hmm. And the pigs we have to kill them in the, in the fall. Uh -huh. Between 10 and 12 pigs, you know, a big hogs, 300, 400 pounds, you know, each. Well, we kill them and we prepare them. For two weeks, you prepare that for the winter. Smoking and salting it and sausages and all gee whiskers, all different kind of meat. You know, you prepare that, smoking the whole thing in a chimney, a great big chimney. And the smoking in here, smoking. We have four chimneys for one, for one, one big chimney. And the, the whole thing is filled up with the bacon and, and the whole thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the whole thing is filled up with that same thing, you know. And then when that stuff done, then we the, the girls go to the house and do the housework. And the men's there in a barn, feed the horses in the morning, clean them up, shake them up, <laughs> you know, shine them up, you know, first. You got all the horses in the winter just as much as in the summer. On the summertime when, when the horses are pregnant, you send them on a faraway field, you know, to the men that they watch the horses. They don't do nothing. They're just, you know, pregnant and they're waiting till they get over. But when they get over about one month, out they go to work <laughs> and that's the end you know of that but that's the that's the only one I know that that's a field field work you know you work at from early spring how can you say it? early spring January February March in March you begin to March April May for the three months you just plant them and seed them and everything to grow and when you plant them in April, don't worry, you have to pick them up in June. And when yeah. you plant them in May, you picked up in a, a August you know, or September. Was wheat, corn, and rye the only things you planted on the farm? Did you plant anything else besides those? Oh, yeah. You plant all different kinds of stuff that you see under the... You, you plant about seven different kinds. Like what? Wheat, corn, rye, uh, let's see, rye and uh, barley and uh, clover and, well, that's the whole thing. Uh -huh. Most of the things that you have to use it, clover, you use that daily when, it's a, when, it, when the pigs are real small and they're left over after mama. Mama goes on the field all day long, you know, from six o'clock in the morning till four o'clock afternoon. Then they all rush home. And the little pigs are, would die if, if you don't feed them with a little green stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. You have green stuff in a garden or you have green stuff bringing it with the horses, you know. Mm -hmm. That's the way to feed them, you know. What about the accordion? Yeah, I get the accordion because I was a little, I was about 12. 
the 13, the highest. And my brother, they have to go in the field always. Well, I know that where he keeps that. He keeps that accordion way upstairs, you know, in a barn where he sleeps, you know, he doesn't sleep down. Uh -huh. He sleeps hanging, you know. He sleeps there in a accordion right next to that. Well, I know he's far away on a field. I want to get that accordion and play it, you know. You can't do it because there is always somebody that's going to watch you. But somehow I just went up and climbed up, you know. Uh -huh. I was about 12. That's the first time I, I remember. And I was going, you know, easy to climb. But the accordion is heavy. How can I get that down? Oh, she's going to go drrrr. <laughs> she's going to tear apart. Okay. I go up, you know, that's just like up to that curtain that you, the horses cannot go up there. Right on the top of this is a sheet, you know, of, made from the hood. Then on the top of that, the mattress and all the 70 sleeves go upstairs. So I climb up, you know, somehow, and I go up. And there's not enough space, you know, you have to go like this, you know, you can't play. You have to get that down. By the time I get down, ooh, I dropped it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and when I dropped it, she got hole inside. Yeah, oh by God, you don't know what that means, you know. I was patching it, I was doing everything and anything just to shut that hole, you know. Somehow I grabbed it and I went down in a in a garden, you know, where's uh, what do you call them? Not the tub, what the what do you call them? What? The weed in here that we we don't like it, you know. Anyway that the weed that grows about that big high, you know. And we planted for the pigs, you know in the summertime to eat him. I lay down, then that's the way I can play it really. Mm -hmm. When I lay down... In the clover? Pardon me? Clover? Right there in the garden, on the glo in clover, yeah. Clo <laughs> I went down in the ground, and I lay down, and accordion was right on the top of me. <laughs> I did it, and I just made it, you know. I know how to do it, but I never tried it before. And then I was going up and sitting down and started again, and again, and again, and again, until I really know how to play it, you know. Anyway, I played about seven days. I, nobody don't know where I am. I sneak out with that accordion, out I go. And I play that. And here comes this wedding, out just across the street. And my brother, he was playing, you know. Okay, they took him. I patched that, you know, the one that holds mm -hmm. it, patched it. But he's a smart, he knew that that was stolen. And then he asked me, did you ever took my accordion? <laughs> Who is that? At the end of the line, you know, he knew that I was the one, nobody else can do it. I admit that, yes, I did, you know. Mm -hmm. How, why did you take it? Ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, you know, crying, you know. And then he didn't hit me. He just told me, ask me. But if I ask you, you're never gonna give it to me. <laughs> and that's the end you know, of it. But I used to play that accordion when a wedding was across the street. Uh -huh. He likes to dance as a young man, you know. 24, 25, that's the best for dance. And I says, Okay, I'll hold it down for you. While I hold it, you know, for him, I start playing that real good, you know. He says, you did it, you did it. <laughs> huh. And he was kind of laughing, and he likes it, you know. He said, go ahead and play them, go ahead and play. So I played the whole evening, you know, for them, until I was really uh, finger tired, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I quit it, you know. That's the real reason that he knew I played it, you know. After that, he says, always ask me, so you're going to have to knock it down, you know. And then when he goes away, he says, only you to play. Nobody else can touch it. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Where's he going? Where do he go? Well, he goes always in the field to work. Uh -huh. You know, no matter where he goes, either on the horses to go to take the, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, garbage, you know. Because we have all of the stuff from the horses and all the stuff from the cows right in the pile, right in the pile. And uh, God bless you, from here up to the end of the line, it was always a dirt, you know, dirt and, and hay and all that stuff. You have to take that in the spring, earliest in the spring, way up in January, to spread it up all the way around, you know. That's what the men are doing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's that's the real point that I stole it and he showed it to me. Uh huh. Tell me about uh, tell me about the war that happened then. What oh, effect did it have on you? Oh God bless tell you. Tell me about all about the war those those couple yeah. of years, nineteen thirteen, yeah. fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. You know when the war started, we have lots of land, you know, because everybody was in a group. The father was there, grandpa was not there, but the father was in there. Oh, God bless you, there's about over 100 acres, you know, wheat to do that. Well, everybody's busy like the Dickens, you know. In the summertime, you need about 20 people. And here comes the war. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven men out of your house. Oh, pa. How, who's going to work? Sheesh, what, what the hell the war cares? All of my four brothers, and the youngest one, he's about 16. He's just waiting like a gallow, you know, they grab him and young one, you know, 16, 17, out you go, all on the field, shoot. And we, and they left us. They all left in early spring. Oh, by God, and nobody to, the corn was all uh, with the hay, with, uh, with, with everything, you know. Mm -hmm. The whole thing was, the whole thing was all uh, full of, uh, you know, baloney, you can say, with the corn. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the whole thing was chop suey, you know. There is nobody to work. And, oh, the wheat has to come off. You know, that's the real reason. Uh -huh. When the summertime came in, my second brother, not the oldest, the second brother, he was a little bit, you know, like, on a sickish, you know, he was sick, like. He pretended he's sick, that he's always sick, something is wrong, he have to go home. When he came home, he took 20 Germans, you know, uh, one that we, uh, uh, what do you call that now? You know, when you when you fight in a war, or well, you take some of the wars, you just, you know, you know, you just grab those men and run back, you know, and the other one grab your men and, uh, you know, what what do you call them? What do you call what? What do you call what? You know, the men that you grab from the other war. Prisoner? Prisoners, yeah. yeah. He brought 20 prisoners. Oh, yeah? From, from you know, the prisoners is one place, and, and he took the prisoners, 20 of them, to come home to work to eat. He, <laughs> he brought all of those that don't know nothing about field, you know. Maybe five of them know. The rest of them is all, you know, like you, you know, never saw the field. They were all in a Germany, but different kind of work. Never work in a field. And anyway, the whole thing, those four or five men, they know how to work. They show it to me. They blah, 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 and fight them, you know, and come on and work this and this. And we didn't understand the language, you know. They speak German and we speak Serbian. Well, that's all they know. Then when they see me and they saw my brother, you're 16, well, that guy know how to work more than <laughs> five of you. But at, anyway, we finished it up, 20 of them. You do this, you do this, and, and they finished it up. The whole wheat was inside. We, we had a little bit more corn, you know, not corn, but that uh, wheat to, you know, to tie, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, God bless you, you can't buy it that year again from Germany. 
There is no more. The next year we have to do it with the hands. So that's the re real reason that why I remember that. And they were all, you know, <laughs> they, they take the wheat and lay down and sleep in that, you know. Uh -huh. And that, you can't do that. You have to do that, you know, after the wheat is off, not while the wheat is on, you know. They don't know the difference. <laughs> So that's the real, real trouble that we have with them, you know. The first year, corn was no good. Golly, the corn was all full of uh, different kind of weeds around, you know. Then the corn doesn't grow. And the wheat was all, you know, oh, we had more trouble with them than anything else. The next year, we have about five of them that know how to do it, you know. They took the command, you know. And all the women are home pregnant. <laughs> Four women are no good, you know. And they just, oh, 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 just, just walk around. And my father would start drinking heavily. He says, yes, so smarty, I never saw anybody lazy like this, you know. But that's, that's the trouble, you know. The grandpa died, and they all start either to divide, to go away, or to just to bust, you know, they don't want to stay together. But they stood that first year during the wartime year. A second year, they all split it, you know, this way, this way, this way. They all went away. In each direction, we had one, what do you call that? Like a farm, you know, you know, like a farm we have. Only the whole Field is a farm, but there is no houses. And when you have a house, that's what we call farm. And when we have about 30 acres on one end, and then we have about five acres away, another 20 acres, we bring all that stuff to the farm. So one woman was staying with her kids on one farm. There was 50 acres on one end, and then we bring another 50 here. And that's practically more than half of the land. Anyway, the whole thing was, you know, mixed up, you know, but it was done, you know, better than to stay here and then in a salash, you know, we call it salash, that's farm. In a farm used to be a man and wife, you know, hired. After her man went in, in a war, she picked up her stuff and came to city. Leave the farm, the whole thing, you know. That's your farm, that's not her farm. Mm -hmm. So then it was my own sister-in-law's. She didn't have any husband, but she went down because that's our land. One, two. Two, two women went away and two were staying in the city. It was really uh, messed up, but it was done better than with them hired you know, people. And we had all that accumulated. 700, 700 and something tons of wheat, you know. Mm -hmm. How many wagons full of wheat to deliver that? Mm -hmm. We were the fifth in a village, fifth richest people of the, in a village to have that much land, you know, and that much wheat. Mm -hmm. Second year, oh yeah, yeah, about 50 or 60 acres off. No, no more to, who, who's going to, who's going to work that up? No, nobody to work that. You, you had that first year, them gang, you know. How next year, who can tell? When they finish the feet, bye-bye, back in the war. Land is then to you. Who's going to plow that? Who's going to weed it? And who's, <laughs> that was the mistake, you know. So the third year, we didn't have one-third of the land worked up and everything is empty empty like this you know mm -hmm. no wheat no corn no nothing you know and that was a pity of the whole field you know you know you can just tell who is this 15 acres so oh, so and so who is this 20 acres so oh, so and so <laughs> you know that was the war time during the three or four years we were really Backwards, you know, not a little bit, but backwards, oh, yo, yo. One, one third was off your hand. Right. Mm. And 
war time. No, everybody was in a war. It was so, you know, everybody away. Oh yeah, the second year, my uh, youngest brother, you know, the 16 year, he was 17. He was picked up. I didn't even even know how to wipe his nose and picked up the gun. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you know. Go ahead and take the gun. Uh huh. Listen, you were telling me once about about a haystack where a bunch of Germans came and they shot into it with guns. Oh yeah, yeah. Now yeah. what was that about? Tell me that about that. The, that was the third year. They were looking for the people who was hiding. Where? There. Where were they looking? <laughs> In a haystack. Where were these haystacks? In a yard, in our yard. In your yard. But, uh, you know, you'd be surprised. The haystacks are made out of the corn, you know. Mm -hmm. The corn bushes, bushes. And the haystacks are from here to, to that little tree. A oh, great big one, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just it, you know. That's a great big, you know. Well, we have about 10 of them. You know, 10 or more than 10. A great big one, you know, stand in the yard. Well, they used to... Come on out or we'll kill you. Well, the one that's really scared and maybe he's just a shallow, you know, so the guys can do with the, with the sword, you know. They come out, you know. But most of them are standing in the middle of that and they were choking in themselves, you know. But there is still air, you know, inside, you know. They stood, you know. But how many people we had that was hiding? Oh, yeah, yeah. More than one third of the people was hiding in those haystacks and and in the ground and and then we pulled the furniture over and what next you know the whole thing was in a in a mess where were you me i was in a house and you know the women's they were attacked i was just about 14 but when you were about 17 or 18 they attack you like like nobody business you know and the brothers and the sisters, whoever find out, yo, hide them, you know, fast. But it was too late, you know. And I was just a little kid, I was just hiding, you know, any place. No matter, I was about going to 14. A skinny little thing. 